Now this video is a video that you guys have been requesting for us to do for a long time. And now in this episode, we're gonna be exploring 10 differences between Catholic and Protestant Christians. Welcome back guys to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton. And for this episode, I'm gonna be focusing a lot on the various different views on the doctrine of both of these churches. But before I get into those though, I feel like it's really important to understand why there is a split in the first place. Catholicism and Protestantism. So that's where I'm gonna start off. That's the difference at number 10, the split. Now the history of the Roman Catholic Church begins with the teachings of Jesus Christ and he lived in the first century CE in the province of Judea of the Roman Empire. Now the contemporary Catholic Church says that it's simply just a continuation of that early Christian community that was established at the time of Jesus. Again, there's a whole lot more that goes into the history but that's kind of what it is summed up in a nutshell according to the Catholic view. However, over time, there were certain inconsistencies that were noticed in the church that led to a reformation. Now, this reformation began in the year 1517 when a German monk named Martin Luther, not to be confused with Martin Luther King Jr. That came like way later. But Martin Luther, he began to protest the Catholic Church. His followers were then later called Protestants, or Protestants as we kind of pronounce it today. Now, many people and governments, they started to adopt the new Protestant ideas. And these ideas were seen to be more in line with what the Bible was actually teaching versus what the Roman Catholic Church was doing. But there still were those who remained faithful to the Catholic Church, but this led to the split. The next difference at number nine to look at is the Pope. Catholics have a Pope and the Pope is considered a vicar for Christ, which pretty much is an infallible representation representative that heads the church. Now the Pope is also like a chief pastor of the Catholic Church globally and is also the head of state of the Vatican City State. Protestants, on the other hand, don't believe that human beings can be infallible, and they hold a view that only Jesus is the head of the church. The next difference is the Eucharist. Now, when we talk about the Eucharist, Protestants usually call it the Lord's Supper or Communion. Eucharist is normally used in uh, Catholicism. But either way, in the Roman Catholic Church, they have the doctrine of transubstantiation. Yeah, a little bit of a tongue twister term, but what does that mean anyways? Well, it's pretty much the belief that the edible substance and the drink that's used during the mass literally becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Now, most Protestants view the Lord's Supper, or you can call it the Eucharist, but they view this as a commemoration of Jesus' death and that whatever is eaten and drank at that time are simply symbols of the body and blood of Jesus and nothing more. Some Protestants, however, they hold a view of consubstantiation, and that is pretty much that that the body and blood of Jesus are seen to coexist. So existing pretty much at the same time as the bread and the wine that's drank. But the bread and the wine stay completely separate. It's almost as if Jesus is present, he's covering the bread and the wine as they eat it. Again, a lot more can be said on those differences, but that's just sort of like the nutshell summary. Then there's also praying to saints. So Roman Catholics have the doctrine of intercessory prayer to saints. Saints are those people, by the way, who are viewed as holy, who have passed away, and you can pray to them in addition to praying to Jesus as well as directly to God the Father. But praying to the saints can also be more like praying through them, and it, that's kind of similar to asking a fellow church member to pray for you or pray for you and your family. But in Protestantism, there's no equivalent to this kind of veneration of saints. And Protestants, they really put a lot of emphasis that anyone can actually go and have direct access to God when they pray. They don't need to pray through no saints or anybody else. The next difference I wanna look at is the authority of the churches. Now, the Catholic Church claims to be God's continuing voice on the earth, so the Bible is completely under its supreme authority. And this is why the Roman Catholic Church also believes that they can include a lot of traditions along with what the Bible teaches. Speaking of that, the First Vatican Council has this specific claim. It is not from sacred scripture alone that the Roman Catholic Church draws her certainty about everything which has been revealed, but sacred tradition transmits in its full purity God's word, which was entrusted to the apostles. Now, in the case of the Protestant Church, Protestants hold the view that each individual 
has the authority to interpret the Bible as well as uh, there's a lot less different traditions that are added to the Bible. So that's how the Protestants and Catholics, they differ when it comes to the point of authority. Protestants say like, hey, the Bible teaches this, you know, you can't be adding traditions to it. All right, guys, so we reach halfway in this episode. If you're enjoying it so far, don't forget to leave a like on this video as well as hit that subscribe button and ring that bell if this is your first time here to FTD Facts. That way you'll be notified of daily episodes like this. But we don't just explore the world of religion. We also talk about different countries, cultures, and people from all around the world. So if any of those topics interest you, stick around for a while and join us every day here on FTD Facts. The difference at number five is the sacraments. So Catholics are the only ones that have the concept of seven sacraments. And those are baptism, confirmation, the Eucharist like we talked about, penance, anointing of sick people, as well as holy orders. And then there's also matrimony. Now, on the other hand, many Protestant denominations, such as those that are within the Reformed tradition, they identify two main sacraments that they believe were instituted by Jesus Christ himself. And those are the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper or communion. And also there is baptism. The difference at number four Ooh. is salvation. Now, Protestants, they usually express the idea that when it comes to salvation, that is done only by faith in Jesus. So once a person puts their faith in Jesus, then God declares them as righteous right there on the spot. Now, in the Roman Catholic Church, it's a little bit different. They view justification, which is pretty much the act of declaring or making someone righteous in the eyes of God. They view that as a process and it's fully dependent on the grace that they receive by participating in the various church traditions. Okay, so moving on now to difference number three, we have priesthood. Now in Protestantism, they have sort of like a horizontal structure of what they call priesthood because pretty much everybody is a priest. Now, often the scripture from the Bible that is quoted is 1 Peter 2 verse 9. It says this, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So it's more of like not necessarily a class of people, but pretty much like a distinct group of people People because yes, you found favor in the eyes of God. But in Catholicism, priesthood is completely different. Like priests are a class of ordained ministers that have authority to forgive and withhold forgiveness through the sacraments as well as through penance and other Catholic traditions. And that's actually a good segue to the difference at number two, and that is the tradition. So Protestants, they don't hold the view that tradition is equal with the authority of the scripture, but Roman Catholics actually have a different perspective on this. The Catholic Catechism, which pretty much sums up in a book, the beliefs of the Catholic Church says this. It says that the church does not derive her certainty about all revealed truth from the Holy Scriptures alone. Both scripture and tradition must be accepted and honored with equal sentiments of devotion and reverence. But for Protestants, they only hold a view that scripture is authoritative, and that is all no other external tradition. I know I talked about that a little bit um, previously, but I just want to shed a little bit more light on that belief because it actually is one of the biggest differences and bones of contentions when it comes to the Catholic Church and Protestant churches. And now finally, the difference at number one is the view of Mary. To Catholics, Mary is not only the mother of Jesus Christ, but also the mother of the entire church. According to Catholic doctrine, Mary was conceived without original sin, and that's known as the Immaculate Conception. And at the end of her earthly life, that she was taken up body and soul into heaven, and then that's where she was was exalted as the queen over all things. That doctrine, by the way, is a doctrine of assumption. And then from there on, she continues to intercede for the entire church. But Protestants, they only honor Mary as being the earthly mother of Jesus Christ. And they believe that she, like everyone else, sinned and needs salvation. Protestants also don't believe that Mary was taken up to heaven, but rather that she passed away and she's waiting in her grave until the day of resurrection. And just like that, that ends this episode on the 
10 differences between Catholics and Protestant Christians. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I really hope it cleared up a lot of different viewpoints and confusions that you may have had. You've probably heard the term Catholic and Protestant. And you're like, what is actually the big difference? There are a whole lot more differences, by the way. So if you, again, like this one and you want to see a part two, be sure to let me know down below in the comments section. My social media links are below in the video description section also. So give me a follow and I'll leave you the recommended episode coming up at the end screen. So thank you guys for joining me here on FTD Facts and learning with me. It's always great hanging out with you and I'll see you guys in the next episode.